And we are now joined by one of the solid members of the BYU secondary, Diane Gonwoloku, the artist formerly known as Diane Lake. That's I, right. I got to start with this. Does it bother you when you get teased about Ty Detmer calling you Diane Guacamole? Um, to be honest, I didn't know at first that he was. <laughs> like, I heard from other people that he was calling me Guacamole, and I saw some on Twitter, and I was like, wait, I don't get the inside joke. And then I saw him, and then he actually told me, I was like, you really don't know how to say Goloku? And he said, guacamole. I'm like, it's not guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> so say it again, because we, we think we know how to say it, but we want to make sure. You're... All right, so it was like, the N in it is silent. So oh. if you take the N out, it's just ga wolo ku ga wolo ku Okay. Yeah. That's why we asked now the we source. Know. A- now we you know. And <laughs> remind people why you are going by a different last name in, in ga, ga wolo ku yeah. this year. Well, just because my – well, ga wolo is my middle name. And my uncle, he just passed away this year, and from he's from Philadelphia, and so I just like took his uh, my Gawulaku name and put it as my last name because that was our family name, and just to represent him, I just changed it. So legally, it's still Lake, but just for my uncle's sake, from his passing away, I just changed it on my back of my jersey to Gawulaku to represent him. What did he mean to you? He was everything to me because he's the reason, one of the reasons that. We came here, he helped us come from, me and my sister, when we came from uh, Liberia, because the war, he, like, paid for some stuff, like, helped my dad through the process, and my mom, and so that was just, like, a big part, and he always came to, like, visit us sometimes, and then, just, like, I haven't seen him in a while, because he moved to Philadelphia, but he always, like, took the time to come back to Utah to visit us, and he was just a big part of our lives. How old were you when you moved from Liberia? I just barely turned five. Wow. It was, yeah. I what really a journey. Five. It was. It was a long journey on the plane by ourselves. So it was like my first time seeing a plane. So I was, of course, crying on the plane. Like first time seeing white people coming from Liberia. And it was just like culture shock to me when I first came. Wow. And now you're here at BYU after a successful career at Northridge High School. Got to get a Northridge <laughs> shout out hey, in there. It was going nice. Hey, fellow <laughs> nice right here, man. <laughs> But uh, you're you're one of the guys on a very talented BYU defense uh, that brings back a lot of the weapons that produced some very impressive numbers last year. Uh, just in your mind, where where would you set that expectation level for the BYU defense in 2017? We got to get more takeaways. I feel like well, we're already at a pretty high level, and I feel like we can get even, at an even higher level uh, this year with uh, some of the returning stars we have coming back and. I just feel like if we, we had some takeaways, we should have been had in some a ton of games, like seven, eight points away from being undefeated. And I feel like we, we us defensive guys, we put it on ourselves because those are the other teams scoring, and obviously we have to stop that. And uh, I just feel like we can get at another level and take away some of those takeaways from other teams and create more turnovers to make plays and give our offense a chance to score. Last year was incredible with takeaways. To hear you say you want even more is also incredible because you had 31, you're second in the country. We're seeing right here on BYU TV the Boise State pick six. I believe you had three interceptions last year. What are you hoping to do individually to help this team? Uh, well, as a whole, we need uh, to know our posi- like know our assignments. And me, individually, as a corner, I like work on my techniques and – know the plays, all the plays, not just my position, the corner, that's what the safety's doing because they're our help over top. Uh, just know where everyone is doing. So as soon as we master our position, I feel like start learning other people's positions and it will help us be even better out there. Harvey Longy was your setup guy last year for oh, yeah. uh, those big defensive plays. He's gone now playing for the New England Patriots. So who's yeah. going to be your setup guy this year to help score hey, some touchdowns? Next man up, whoever it is, hopefully it's Fred, but he's usually on choice side, so – Hopefully we have another DN, uh, Siona Saki Taki's back this year, and whoever deflects the ball, or even if it's not deflection, hopefully I still find a way to get a pick. This secondary is very exciting. At the beginning of the year, we thought, hey, there's some talent here. And you guys proved it with a bunch of takeaways. What's it like to be out there with all the guys, but especially kind of a young group that you know, hey, we're going to play like three or four years together? Yeah, we just feed off that, like being young and all together we have – some senior like Fred and all of them, but just being young as a group, we just like feed off each other on the takeaways, and it's just fun being out there. It's not like it's not really like work when we're out there together. It's just like, well, oh, we're here to make plays. We're about to make plays. Like when we go up, when we go out there together, all eleven, we just know we're gonna make a play and get the ball back to the offense. 
Like the Legion of Boom for the Seahawks. <laughs> smelling like a potential nickname for this young group. You, Troy, yeah, Chris what, Wilcox. What does the BYU Isaiah secondary need as a nickname? Michael Shelton. Like, hey, let's we, figure out something. No, we, we were trying to establish a name in the position meeting room, but it's like it's hard. We wanted to do uh, the Looney Tunes <laughs> and just all be like characters from that. <laughs> but we couldn't decide who's going to be who, so we're still working on that yeah, right okay, now. Okay. You let us know when yeah, you've got it, or we'll get the fans to yeah. summon up a nickname. They're pretty Hopefully, good. They They're are, already summoning good. up yeah. things right now. That's what <laughs> happens, especially on media day. <laughs> Diane Gawoluku. The yes. N is silent. The we N learned is silent. that today. That's why yep. we ask questions, There's man. one thing stuff. we learned on media day. It's that the N is silent. Yeah. Ask and thou shall receive. That's right. Very cool. Uh, when you look at the 2017 schedule, and we've joked with all the players, it's like, okay, Portland State, 64 days away. It's all on Portland State, all on Portland State. But it's June 23rd. Clearly, you've at some point thought about LSU or Utah or playing Wisconsin. Like, what do you think about the schedule, and what do you look forward to most about this 2017 schedule? It's exciting seeing the big games we have at the start, even at the finish. We still got to finish strong how we start. But just seeing, first, we got to take care of Portland State. Um, it always starts with the first game. And after Portland State, just seeing LSU, that's a big game I look forward to. Wisconsin, of course, we got to beat Utah. And those are just games I feel like we're not losing. We're not going to, like this season, we're not, I don't want to lose by seven points, one point, however many we lost by last year. Like, I just want to win those games, those close games, instead of having them all close. I want to be like big wins instead of small losses. So just flip it around this year. You grew up in Utah. What does the BYU Utah rivalry mean to you? Oh, it's big, really, really big. Even with recruiting and everything, because you have both coaches every week coming to your school trying to recruit you, and then you like say one thing to a coach, you say another thing to another coach. Like it is hard to decide. And I can see how kids like will say, "I'm not going to either school," I guess, and just go out of state or go to a different school, just because it's such a big rivalry that you just. You have to pick one side. You can't just be, I'm a Utah and BYU guy. You got to choose BYU or Utah. And I already knew I was a BYU guy. I'm like, I got to beat these Utah guys. I just knew I was a BYU guy and had to find my place here on the team, I guess, and find a way to beat the guys up north. <laughs> September 9th, it'll be a fun night. It will. Well, you didn't play for Lavelle, but you guys understand the legacy of Lavelle. What does it mean to have the patch, which is a small symbol and kind of token of remembering him? on the jersey this season and it's on your left sleeve today yeah like you said i didn't play for him a lot of us didn't but we uh we respect him a ton like just seeing because we always watch film on like how his coaching style was and Saki brings a lot of that into the program now but just like how he was as, as a coach and how he interacted with the players and the other coaching staff um it just like it makes us want to win a national championship to be honest just like the way he coaches and makes you want to go out there and play for your coach and your teammates, not just for yourself. Diane Gawoluku, talented member of the BYU football secondary. Um, we have to get this in because we've given everybody else a chance to make their claim for who has the best hair on the team, Diane. So uh, where do you <laughs> fall in the hair ranking standings today with uh, Jonah Trineman and Fred Warner? To be honest, I'm like Jonah's mentor with his hair. <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is. It is what it is. Like so far, I think I'm leading everyone right now. But Jonah's ke catching up. Fred, his, you're the trendsetter. Fred still got his crown sitting on the top crown. of his head, but <laughs> still. But you know, right now it's like it's getting pretty even. Jonah's hair grows fast, I guess. But you know, <laughs> who's got the worst hair on the team? Hey, I can't say that. Oh, he's a good teammate. Mm. Kalani asked me to ask that to check if you would answer that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, here, here we are, like 64 days away from the season. Okay, um, what what have you worked on uh, as as a group, as an individual, this summer before you get to fall camp? Uh, just being as a group, like we're trying to be more technicians instead of just like going out there and kind of just messing things up. But I feel like us DBs, uh, corner safeties, everyone, we just have to work on our techniques and. If we know the plays and you're working on your techniques, you can play a lot faster and make more plays. And so that's the big thing right now, just your technique, how everything's ran, then that's how the whole defense forms and everyone do their job. I think things will work out. One of the greatest, if not the greatest, Northridge Knight ever. <laughs> 
Diane go what with you. I appreciate He's, it. Yeah. You're up there, dude. Daniel Coates was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Colby Buckwald. But his chapters are still Dan yet to Van be written. Swin. Yeah. You got a shot to be the best Northridge Knight ever, and that includes Spencer. That's <laughs> <laughs> Diane, thanks for the time, man. Enjoy the rest hey, of media day, and uh, we're looking forward to the season. 64 days, man. Yo, I appreciate it.